All right, today we're gonna to talk about multiplying and dividing rational numbers. We've already talked about what rational numbers are. The official definition is a number that can be written as a fraction. So that includes all positive and negative fractions and decimals, except for decimals that go on forever and don't repeat or end. So for our purposes, we're talking about positive and negative fractions and decimals. So the good news is that everything you've learned about integers is still going to work. And everything you've learned about fractions and decimals is still going to work. So this isn't really brand new information. It's more like taking things you've already learned and putting them together into one problem. All right, so uh, we have a negative 4.5 times negative 3.06. We know that when you multiply two negatives, your answer is a positive. So the actual multiplying of these numbers is no different than what you've learned in the past. And so we're just gonna multiply the regular way. Six times five is 30. Three times five is 15. Put a placeholder. 4 times 6 is 24, and then 4 times 3 is 12. We're going to add these together. And then hopefully you remember that to find out where you put the decimal in the answer, you count how many places are behind the decimal in the problem. It's 3, so we're going to put our decimal here. So our answer will be 13.77. It's going to be positive because I have a negative times a negative. For this next one, this is a division problem. And since we have a positive and a negative, I know my answer is going to be negative. So I'll just divide the way that I've learned how to divide here. 6 goes into 12 twice, evenly. Bring that decimal up. When I bring down the 3, 6 does not go into 3. So I'm going to need to bring down a 0, and it's going to go in exactly 5 times. And then that's going to be a negative 2.05 because we have one negative and one positive, and we know when we multiply or divide numbers that have different signs, the answer is negative. And one more decimal problem. This one is saying that we're going to multiply negative 0 0.4 times itself three times. So first I'll do these guys, the first two. Um, I know that's going to be positive because I have a negative times a negative. And if you can't do this one in your head, you're just going to multiply it, right? And then move the decimal twice to the left. So this is going to be a positive 0.16. You can put a zero out in front if you want to. And then multiplied by that last negative 0 0.4. I know the answer to this is going to be negative because I have one positive and one negative that I'm multiplying. So I'm going to do this over here. 6 times 4 is 24. So I'm going to get 64. And then since there are one, two, three places behind the decimals in the problem, there's going to need to be three places. So one, two, three, I'll need a zero there. So 0 0.064, you can put a zero in front if you want to, and don't forget the answer's negative because the last two numbers I multiplied had one positive and one negative. So those are my decimal examples. Now we're going to look at uh, multiplying and dividing with positive and negative fractions. So same rules apply that if I have different signs, one positive and one negative, my answer is going to be negative. We could even go through and do that right now. A negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. A positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. So I know what sign my answer should be just by looking at them. I'm going to cross cancel anywhere possible. 4 goes into 4 once and into 25 times. 3 goes into 3 once and into 21 7 times. So I have like negative 1 times 5 is negative 5 and 1 times 7 is 7. And that's going to be my final answer. It's in the smallest possible simplified form. For number 5, I want to change this to an improper fraction. So 7 times 3 is 21 plus 1 more is 22. It's still negative. And we talked about where those negatives go in a fraction. The negative sign can either be in the numerator, the denominator, or even with the fraction bar. I just always put it in the numerator. So when I'm dividing fractions, I know that's the same as taking the first fraction and multiplying it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. See how I kept that negative in the numerator? 
And then I'm going to cross cancel anywhere possible. Three goes into three once and into nine three times. Two goes into four twice. Two goes into 22 11 times. So I have 33 positive because negative 11 times negative three is positive 33 over two. You can keep your answer like that. Or if you want to, you can make it like 16 and a half. I actually prefer the improper fraction. And lastly, we have an example where we're multiplying a fraction and a decimal. So first I'm gonna change this um, to, actually, let's change this to a decimal. We either need to change them both to decimals or both to fractions. This is the same as like three and six tenths, which would be 3.6 multiplied by negative 6.05. I know my answer is gonna be negative but I can work it out right here. I think most people think, if possible, decimals are easier to work with. But if you have a repeating decimal, then you're gonna to need to use fractions. And then again, I'm gonna count how many places are behind the decimal in the problem and put that many numbers behind the decimal in the answer. So 21.78 is gonna be negative because we have a positive times a negative. All right, one more example to go here, a word problem. Jess is making a recipe that calls for one and one fourth cups of chocolate chips. If she wants to make a batch that is 2.5 times more, how many cups of chocolate chips will she need? Does it seem more reasonable to answer with a fraction or a decimal and why? All right, like we just talked about, we know we're gonna multiply these, right? Because we want something 2.5 times bigger than 1.4. We can either use fractions or decimals, but because of this question it's asking me here, where it says, um, would we answer with a fraction or a decimal? Think about when you're baking or cooking, you're gonna use measuring cups and those are fractions. So I think we should use fractions. This is 2.5, two and a half, right? And we're definitely gonna need to change these to improper fractions. Um, I just did something wrong. Four, five fourths. Oh, I know what I did wrong. This is a two. I was gonna say, those aren't the same numbers. So let's multiply these. I'm gonna get 25 over eight. And again, think about what you're using this for. If you're using it for baking with measuring cups, we're gonna to wanna to convert this to um, four goes into 25 three times, three times eight is 24. This is, a, this is something you could use a measuring cup for, three and one eighth, right? If you had like three point, one, two, five or something and left it as a decimal, that wouldn't be a reasonable thing for cooking. All right, guys, that's it.